Welcome back, everyone. I'm Bob Lovell. This is Indiana Sports Talk. Joe Stasniak joins us. Hard Literally, to by accident, by luck, and being in the right place at the right time and knowing the right person kind of got me into radio. I mean, I started my career as a uh, college basketball coach. I never had any intention of going into, into radio at all. I spent some time at Franklin College, and then I was at IUPUI. And my last two years at IUPUI, our games were carried by a local radio station in Indianapolis. And my play-by-play -play person at the time was a young man named Scott Eaker. And Scott Eaker was the news and sports director of Network Indiana. Once I resigned from IUPUI in 1994, Scott called and asked me what my plans were, and frankly, I didn't have any. And he said, we have this idea for a statewide radio show. All right, Greg Rakestraw, let's run. This is a 10 minute segment, so let's spend about five of them going through all your titles. <laughs> like I've been handed down by English royalty. Member of the uh, Veteran Colts Radio Network. Which doing, is the reason why you get an in studio appearance. That's it. Floors above you the last two hours. And I appreciate you doing that. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, for those of us here in Indianapolis, in the building, 1070thefan.com. We created this show in 1994 as a, as a post-game show around for the state of Indiana. So on Friday nights during the fall, we're talking about high school football, maybe previewing some college football. On Saturday nights during the fall, we're talking about college football and what happened that day. Now the same is repeated in, in, in the winter. What we do is get reports around the state from coaches and media members and talk about the games that took place around the state on a Friday and Saturday night. I think, quite frankly, one of the main reasons people listen as much as they do is they want to hear what the scores are. They want to know who won. They want to know who won in this part of the state and that part of the state. So we have uh, two people who are on the phones collecting all those uh, scores either over the phone or on Twitter or on the Internet. We have a studio producer who uh, his job literally is the most important job of all of us because he hits the right buttons, makes sure the commercials run when they're supposed to, makes sure we go to break when we're supposed to. He gets all the phone calls coming in from the coaches and the media members about the games and puts that information on the computer so I can have it. My role in many respects when we're on the air is to serve as almost like an air traffic controller. We have all these calls that are coming in and someone's got to slot them in and get them in and get them out and get the information out. So our job is to be, we're in the uh, dissemination of information and we are to give you as much information as in a timely and accurate fashion as we can. The benefits of having your own radio show, I, I think uh, embarrassingly, is it's a uh, a great ego boost. I think, I think we're all creatures of ego. I think it's all, it's all part of it. I think we all want, we aspire to, to, to have people look at us and, and if they're generous and say nice things about it, this gives me a, a connection, a continued connection with sports. I think what we do and how we do our radio show matters to people around the state. I think it matters to coaches and players and parents and grandparents and others when we, we talk about teams and talk about kids and talk about the things they do on the fields and on the court. I think that has, I think there's a significance in that and I think it does matter to the people who listen. So when, you, when, you, when you're doing something in sports and people care about what you're doing and what you do matters and then on top of that you get paid for it, and that's, uh, that's quite an, I think that's something you can be very, very proud of and very, very pleased and proud that you're a part of it. My goal is to uh, give people the opportunity to, to do some work and have some fun and give them the resources they need and uh, whatever guidance I can do uh, can give them to help them realize the goals that they have uh, in this particular job. I'm a former coach, so I believe you can get better at everything. And I believe that you, you can get better on the radio by practicing. There are plenty of ways to go online and create your own show. There are plenty of ways to do it either on YouTube or on various outlets on the internet that allow you to create your own radio show. And it's like any other skill, you'll only get better if you practice. 
you got to do well academically, prepare yourself through a broad spectrum of what you can do and not just focus on the technical side or just focus strictly on, on broadcasting. And another piece of advice, seek out people in the business and ask for their advice. Find a mentor, find someone who can help you and lead you through some of the problems. And the final thought is, you absolutely must be patient. You will not start on ESPN radio right out of college. You will, it'll take a while to find your niche, but while you're doing that, work at your craft, get better at your craft, develop your network, and be patient. The best advice I ever got, and it wasn't relative to broadcasting, it was relative to coaching, and as actually when I was a player in college, and that was good things come to those who are patient and work harder than the next guy.